Hi there, my name is Sally Cathcart from The Curious Piano Teachers. At The Curious Piano Teachers, we have a real zest for teaching and a true understanding of the challenges that modern teaching brings based on our own ongoing practical experience as piano teachers. We create all the resources and the how-to videos so that you can be a confident and authoritative teacher. So today I want to help you get a bit of sparkle into your teaching and the first thing I have to do is rub off all this. Just give me a moment. Okay, that's got rid of that then. Get rid of the duster as well. So in this video we're going to cover how long it takes for pupils, and I'm talking about seven, eight, nine, six year olds, how long it takes to learn to read notation. What happens if you, the teacher, change your approach? And then I'm going to be sharing with you the seven secrets that every music teacher should know in about teaching notation. And by the end of this, you'll have a much better understanding about teaching notation. So first of all, let's start by looking at how long it takes. Now, a lot of people seem to think that learning notation is quite an easy process and that it's going to happen really quickly. Um, I think that that's based on our own idea as experts. We have forgotten how hard learning notation is. You only have to go and learn a new foreign language to discover that learning something new is takes a long time and it's often quite hard work cognitively. So as teachers, I think we have to be much more realistic and think it could take our pupils two to three years. It depends on the conditions. Every pupil is different. But if you say on average two to three years, then I think you're being really realistic to get our pupils really fluently reading from notation. And to do that, as a teacher, you have to be persistent. And I think quite often we fall up on, fall down on this even. We're not persistent enough. We don't keep going for long enough with the basic ideas and concepts. And uh, I think if we can just keep returning to the same topics and every time you return, try and do it a bit different. So one time you might use apps in lessons. Another time you might then use some games or something to get your pupils to respond to that. Another time you might make it a little bit more of a com competition or make it a bit more competitive. Keep returning to notation and persist uh, over a number of years. OK. So the second thing, I think, is that we change our approach. And this really doesn't help our pupils in getting to grips with notation. Let me show you, tell you a little bit more what I mean. Um, so, for example, if you're teaching rhythm to pupils and you start by teaching them um, to use words, run, walk, you know, running, walk, stride, apple, um, you might use one set of words and then think, oh, they're not getting that, so I'll try a different set of words. You might use rhythm language, um, like ta and tay tay or whatever. Um, and then you think, oh, they're not getting that either, so I'll try metrical counting. Or you might try all three in any order or anything of your own. But the thing is, every time you change, that pupil's thinking, ah, oh, well, I was trying to do it right last time, but now they've changed and used... Which approach am I supposed to be using now? I can't... Is it is it tar running? Tar running? They get confused. So whatever approach you take, stick with it. Be consistent and keep using it. Keep using it in the same way with the same language over a longer period of time. So this goes along with a persistent, and it's one of my favorite sayings, you must be consistent and persistent in order to get the results at the end of the day. Okay, so the third thing I want to share with you is how is sparkle, is how to get your pupils to really sparkle at their reading skills. And these are the seven secrets that I think we don't know, and they're not really secrets, and they're summed up in the simple word sparkle. And I'm going to introduce you to it today. So S is for sing, P is for patterns, A is for automatic, R is for rote, K is for knowledge, L is for landmarks, and E is for enjoy. The seven secrets to making notation reading simple and progressive. 
Now there's an awful lot in those seven and I can't, haven't got time to unpack it with you all today. Do join me tomorrow though when I shall be looking at the first one, S for Sing. That's what we're going to cover in the next video. So just to be clear about what you've done today, we've looked at the importance of being persistent in teaching notation. It takes longer than we think. The importance of being consistent. Adopt a strategy, use a method, stick with it. And then I've shared with you the seven secrets to successful notation reading, all summarised in the word sparkle. So, as I said, I'll be back tomorrow and I'll be talking about sing, S for sing. Do follow us on social media and do tune in tomorrow because we've got a fantastic little workbook for you that's going to help you to get greater clarity about this issue of teaching notation. I've been Sally Cathcart from the Curious Piano Teachers. Have a good day.